Today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 favorite LEGO Star Wars minifigures from 2022. I'm also going to make a couple of honorable mentions along the way, but I don't want to waste any time here. Let's get started into the list with number 10. Coming in at number 10, we've got the 187th Trooper. I think it's great that LEGO made this figure even though it's not technically canon. I always love having more options for clone legions. So it's really cool that they decided to go this route and essentially do a recolor of the 501st from 2020. I think the purple color that they chose looks really nice and the detailed printing looks great all around. This segues nicely into our first honorable mention, the 187th Commander with the Airborne Helmet. It would have been really nice to see this figure come with a cloth comma. I'm not sure why they didn't go that direction. I think it looked really good on the 212th Airborne Trooper that came out in General Grievous' Starfighter in 2020. Overall though, the helmet looks great as usual. They've used this mold before and I think it looks good here too. I think it's nice that this was included in the same set as the 187th Troopers with the Republic fighter tank because it offers some really great variation between the troopers and it gives you a great start for your small army. Coming in at number 9 we have Ned B. I think the detailing on this figure is incredible and it's really cool to see that LEGO made a custom mold for it. I think this figure is really faithful to its on-screen appearance. The colors that they went with pop, and I think the printed backpack looks great as well. It's unfortunate that this figure had to come in such an overpriced set, but I guess there has to be something there that convinces us it's worth buying, right? Moving on to number 8, we've got Mace Windu from the Republic Fighter Tank. I'm really glad that he is different from last year's Republic Gunship Mace Windu. I think it's really cool that they included the Republic logo printed on his arms. Overall, it's just a super clean looking minifigure and it comes with the new lightsaber piece without bubbles in it, which I think looks really good in this case. There's nothing too crazy to see here with this figure, but I think it just looks really good overall and is well done. At number seven, we have the Quarren minifigure. I'm sure these guys show up in other places in Star Wars, but I'm most familiar with them from the Battle of Mon Cala in the Clone Wars. Obviously, the biggest thing with this minifigure is the brand new head mold. It's always great when LEGO decides to make new aliens from Star Wars in minifigure form. I think this figure turned out looking fantastic. The torso and leg printing look really good. The head mold is super detailed. And this figure would work great if you're trying to collect a bunch of them together to make a mock because you can just pull the heads off and stick them on different torsos to make unique characters. In slot number six, we've got the fifth brother. It's been quite a few years since we've seen the fifth brother in minifigure form and I'm really glad that this came back with the Kenobi show. The set that he was included in was an incredible build. And really all of the figures from this set were just about perfect in my opinion. The mold for the lightsaber handle looks really accurate to the source material, and I like the way the helmet and armor molds turned out as well. I think I prefer the face printing on this version compared to the older version as well. All in all, this is just a really great figure, and it's instantly recognizable. Sticking with the Inquisitors, up next is the Grand Inquisitor. I think it would have been nice to see him come with his helmet in this set, but I understand why they didn't include it. You don't see him wearing his helmet in the show, and I guess they probably would have had to create a new mold for it as well if they decided to go that route. Overall though, again, a big fan of the lightsaber. I also really like the cape piece that comes with this figure. It's not the same shape as your traditional minifigure cape. It's more of a triangle, and I think it looks really good here. The face print is a little odd on this figure, but I think it works. And I also really love the armor piece for this guy. Overall, a great looking figure, and I'm glad I don't have to pay the aftermarket price for the old Grand Inquisitor. Coming in fourth place, we have Tan Wei, or Tan Wei, not exactly sure how you say it. I think this figure is awesome. It looks pretty similar to the Kaminoan design from the old LEGO Star Wars games, so that brings a certain level of nostalgia with it. This new head mold looks good, and I'm hoping that it'll be reused in the future to make more Kaminoan figures. Earlier this year, there was a rumor floating around about a mini doll version of this character, which I think could have been pretty interesting, but I'm glad they decided to go this direction. I like the way it turned out a lot, and I think it's great that it was also included in a cheaper set to make it more accessible. In third place, I've got the regular Phase 1 clone from the Clone Command Station figure pack. This might be a bit of a controversial pick, but let me tell you why I like this guy so much. First of all, I think the print detailing looks really good. The leg printing looks great, and I know a lot of people aren't a fan of this, but I kind of like the combination between the realistic and animated versions of the torso designs combined together. The unfortunate thing about this figure is that it's pretty hard to get a hold of. I think what makes it so great, though, is the level of customization that you can add to it. Using simple things like custom backpacks from Clone Army Customs, you can really personalize these figures. You can also add on macro binoculars, custom cloth pieces, a rangefinder, or whatever combination of these things suits your purpose. I don't think the helmet holes detract from the design overall here like they do on some of the newer Phase 2 clones. They sit in a natural spot and add so much functionality and customization to these figures. 
For this next figure, we're gonna have to do a little bit of digging. I was kind of surprised to find a bunch of loose pieces when I dumped this box out. After checking through everything, thankfully it seems like nothing's actually missing. One of the bags must have just opened up during transportation. I guess I'll find out for real though when I finally get around to building this thing. Cad Bane comes in at number two on this list. This figure looks fantastic. I love the breathing apparatus mold that they're using, and even though I initially preferred the hat from the older version of this figure, I think the new one's starting to grow on me. The torso and leg printing are super detailed, and I like the silver accents that you can see when it hits the light just right. Overall, I can't really say anything bad about this minifigure other than the fact that it comes in a $170 set that's just overpriced, unfortunately. Moving on into our final honorable mention, we have BD-72. This is the first BD droid in this brand new mold. Obviously, we had BD-1 that came out a little bit later in the year in the buildable character set, but I think LEGO did a great job with these figures. They look instantly recognizable even though they're tiny, and the amount of detail they've been able to include with the printing looks really good. Coming in at the number one spot as a surprise to probably none of you is Phase 2 Commander Cody. This is one of the most highly requested figures over the past couple of years. The printing looks great, and I think it's awesome that LEGO finally decided to make this figure. I do wish that they would have made a custom visor for him that would have been a little bit more form-fitting because this one does feel a little bit bulky, and it would have been nice to get a physical jetpack on him, but overall, I think he looks really good. The visor fills in the awkward holes on the side of the helmet, so it's not really all that noticeable on this figure. I can't necessarily say the same for the other two 12th Troopers, but at least Commander Cody looks pretty great. Comment down below and let me know who your favorite minifigure was from 2022. I definitely couldn't fit everything into this list, so let me know if there's any specific figures you think I should have included. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and check out one of my other videos coming up on the end screen here in just a second. Subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on notifications so you can keep seeing more of my videos. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good one.